The Guardian recently published an article with a sensational title, U.S. teens say they have new proof for 2,000-year-old mathematical theorem. Kelsey Johnson and Nakia Jackson presented on the Pythagorean Theorem at the American Mathematical Society recently. Their presentation centered around a new proof of the Pythagorean Theorem, one that was previously thought impossible. They proved the theorem using only trigonometry. Alicia Loomis's book, which contains no less than 256 proofs of the Pythagorean Theorem, does not include a single one relying solely on trigonometry. And in fact, the author claims that there are no such trigonometric proofs. While I'm not here to evaluate the historical significance of this, I am nowhere near qualified enough to do that, I was interested in Johnson & Jackson's abstract which states that they had an entirely trigonometric proof. Unfortunately, since it's only a presentation and hasn't been published yet, the full proof is not available to the public. However, a news report from local New Orleans TV station WWLTV does have some of the proof in the video. Zooming in on the slides that you can see as part of the video, you can actually reconstruct the proof fairly easily. It only took me about an hour to reconstruct the proof from the things that I saw on their slides, so I encourage you to try it out for yourself, it's pretty fun to do. But since I found this result from these high schoolers so exciting, I wanted to share what my solution was, since their proof is not available online at the moment. What follows is my own interpretation of this proof, based entirely on the slides that I saw from Johnson & Jackson. I, for one, am really excited that two high schoolers were able to come up with this proof, regardless of whether it turns out to be the first trigonometric one. New ideas are hard to come by in a field as well-traveled as this theorem, so I'm excited to see the full paper when it's released. I'll be following the work of Johnson and Jackson going forward, as this video would have been impossible without their pretty ingenious construction. Without further ado, let's get to the proof. We of course start off the same way every Pythagorean proof starts, by drawing a right triangle, A, B, C, as the sides. Then once we've labeled our angles, beta and alpha, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to extend a line out from the tip of angle beta, perpendicular to the hypotenuse of the triangle. And then we're going to make a mirror image of the original right triangle. We're going to notice that this angle is alpha, and then we'll extend the hypotenuse of the second right triangle that we drew until it intersects with this other line. From the original right triangle, we've now constructed a new larger one with sides x, c, and z. The last part of this construction is to subdivide this big triangle into infinitely many smaller right triangles, which are all similar to the original that we drew. The construction is finished now, so let's start calculating. This is supposed to be a trigonometric proof, so let's throw in some trigonometry. The sine of an angle does not depend on the Pythagorean theorem in any way. While it is highly related, you can define the sine of an angle without having any reference to the Pythagorean theorem. It's effectively just an application of similar triangles and their proportions. That being said, you can easily calculate the hypotenuse of this triangle to be 2a divided by the sine of beta. Looking at the original right triangle, the sine of beta is b divided by c, and therefore we simplify this to 2ac over b. Multiplying then by the sine of alpha, we get this expression for the other remaining side, and then dividing by the sine of beta, we can get the expression for the hypotenuse of this smaller triangle. Johnson and Jackson note that the ratio between successive triangles as you go further down this infinite descent is a over b for each triangle meaning that on both sides, each successive hypotenuse gets multiplied by a squared over b squared, since you're going two triangles down the line. This is going to create two geometric series, each with the same common ratio, a squared over b squared. So x can be calculated using that exact geometric series, as you can see on the right here, factoring out a factor of 2ac over b, and then noticing that the common ratio r is a squared over b squared, we can evaluate the length of the side x. In this expression, since r was a squared over b squared, we can go back and go on algebra autopilot to simplify x down to this expression. Let's put that aside for later. As we evaluate the expression for z, we notice that we have to add a c in front of it, followed by a geometric series. Take a moment to check the algebra for yourself if you like. And I'll leave it as an exercise again to substitute in a squared over b squared for r, and simplify z down to this expression, which is very similar to the expression we got earlier for x. 
So similar, in fact, that if we take their quotient, these two factors will cancel out, and we'll be left with just 2ab over a squared plus b squared. And then comes the realization that x over z is just the sine of 2 alpha, opposite divided by hypotenuse for this 2 alpha angle here. Jackson and Johnson then make the ingenious realization that the law of sines has no dependence on the Pythagorean theorem, and therefore we can apply the law of sines to this situation. Looking at the triangle formed by our original small triangle and its mirror image, we can see that the sine of 2 alpha over 2a is equal to the sine of beta over c. Simplifying that gives us an expression for sine of 2 alpha. But the sine of beta on the right hand side is just b over c, and so we can simplify this even further. Now we have two suspiciously similar looking expressions for the sine of 2 alpha, and therefore their denominators are equal. In other words, almost out of nowhere, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. While I'm not sure if this is exactly how Jackson and Johnson did the proof, the one that I showed should be pretty similar based on the news reports that I saw. The only major theorems I saw this relying on were the angle-angle theorem and the law of sines, both of which have proofs which are completely independent of the Pythagorean theorem. Thanks to Johnson and Jackson for creating this incredible proof idea. Thank you also to The Guardian for reporting on this, as well as WWL-TV. And thanks to the American Mathematical Society for giving these two high schoolers the chance to present their findings. Check the description for all my sources, and if you like this video, check out my other one, and I'll maybe see you in the next one.